Hello, everybody, uh, followers of The World Morgen. The World Morgen means the world tomorrow, the new site that uh, in the Dutch language in Belgium and the Netherlands tries to give the not the mainstream news on several issues, national and international, amongst other things, on uh, Palestine and the situation there. Today we have as our guest Ilan Pape. Good morning, Ilan. Good morning. Uh, Ilan Pape is a professor. Uh, he teaches history at the University of Exeter. Uh, but for the moment, I believe you are back home or are you still? Uh, yes, I'm visiting uh, Palestine now. Uh, yes. You're in Palestine for the moment. So, what we would like to discuss is a bit uh, obvious. The new government uh, by, led by Benjamin Netanyahu has been inaugurated or sworn in, as you say. Now, what I what what we see here, what I feel uh, is that there's a major, major discord between, on the one hand, the evolution on world public opinion. Well, mm -hmm. we, we all saw what happened during the World Cup in Qatar, not just Arab Fa football fans, but uh, I also saw English fans, Argentinian fans, Brazilian fans shouting Palestine free in their own language or even saying Pal Palestine hurra, which uh, tells me that these people uh, are aware. And on the other hand, what we see is uh, this new government in, uh, in um, Israel, and I'm just going to cite to you, but I, it's Google Translate, uh, of course, from mm -hmm. Hebrew, what Benjamin Netanyahu himself said in his Twitter account. He, uh, I quote here, these are the basic lines of the national government headed by me, uh, Netanyahu. The mm -hmm. Jewish people have an exclusive and unquestionable right to all areas of the land of Israel. The government will promote and develop settlement in all parts of the land of Israel, in the Galilee, the Negev, the Golan, Judea, and Samaria. He's going to do that with the most extreme right-wing parties uh, in the parliament, in the Knesset. And then uh, just uh, one small citation from Ursula von der Leyen, uh, mm -hmm. head of the European Commission. Looking forward to working eh, on strengthening our partnership, promoting peace in the Middle East. What we have seen the last year, I mean, uh, 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 violence uh, going both from worse and worse, colonial violence against Palestinian people. And I also saw some reaction of, of Palestinians interviewed on the new government and say, well, they, they said, well, you know, can it get any worse? And that is basically this, the, the question that I am going to put to you. You have now this government uh, that's... but. Actually, is it going to really be a change for uh, whatever happens, or can it get worse? Elon, please. Yeah. Again, thank you, Lode, for having me on your uh, program. Uh, it's a great pleasure. This is a very good uh, question, uh, because so many of the things you've mentioned, for instance, uh, the citation you gave from Netanyahu's tweet, uh, uh, this uh, idea of... Uh, settlement and colonization everywhere, not just inside Israel, but also in the West Bank, has already is already has already appeared in the Israeli nationality law in 2018. So in many ways, uh, Netanyahu just repeats something that is already legislated, has been legislated by the Israeli Knesset. There's nothing new in it. Um, many of the things that uh, this new government is talking about are actually already taking place. Uh, so in some respects, uh, there won't be a, a great difference between the violence that the previous government has displayed towards the Palestinians in the occupied territories or the uh, apartheid policies it uh, ex exercised uh, towards the Palestinian uh, citizens of Israel, uh, in many ways, these practices and policies, this brutality, this uh, criminal policy will uh, continue as it were. So where, where do we find the difference? I think there are two or three areas where we should look for something which is a bit different from what we had until now. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, when you are the victim, and I'm not, but the Palestinians are, when, the, when you are the victims of that uh, brutality, uh, the fact that uh, 
there is even a little bit more brutality than was before is very worrying, uh, is very uh, um, terrifying in many ways. Uh, so um, it, it, you, you will see more use of shooting, of killing, uh, of arrest uh, without trial, which always means that it would include a larger number of victims. Uh, if they have shot only one or two journalists in the last year, they might now shoot many more journalists. If they've killed uh, 30 to 40 children uh, in the last uh, a year or year and a half, they probably would have less inhibitions in killing children uh, in the coming year. So it's, it's, it's much worse, but it doesn't change the fundamental problem of uh, the Israeli brutality uh, towards the Palestinians, wherever they are. The second point to find uh, to, to notice is exactly the one you have mentioned when you quoted the um, uh, 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 the uh, representative of the EU. It is very clear that this government makes it easier for any one of us who is trying to convince people around the world that Israel is an apartheid state, that Zionism is a settler colonial project that Israel is using in Gaza incremental genocidal policies, that it's using ethnic cleansing in the West Bank, that all these uh, 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 allegations that we have, all of us, uh, that uh, would require a different approach by the international community towards Israel, uh, it seems that with this new government, it should be easier to persuade people that this is what we are talking about. Um, I mean, if people still needed proof that uh, this is not the only democracy uh, in the Middle East, that it is, as Amnesty International uh, rightly uh, framed it, an, an apartheid state, uh, the question is, will now the governments, not the society, societies are already aware of this, will the governments of the West, uh, particularly of the West, be persuaded that they are dealing with a, a rogue state uh, that requires a different kind of approach. The, the, the signs so far are not very promising. They are all trying to, to tell us, wait, let's see what they are doing. It doesn't matter so much what they said. Yes, there are some worries, I think, in Washington or in Brussels uh, about uh, how to deal with uh, Israel, what to do with the United Nations General Assembly decision last night to pass to the International Court of Justice, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the allegation that Israel's uh, annexation is is taking place and is, is illegal. Um, but I'm not sure how far the governments uh, uh, would go uh, with it. The last thing I want to say, which I think is far more important, because I think the civil society in the West and beyond the West, definitely in the global South, is aware that Israel is not a democracy, that the Palestinians are victims of an ongoing ethnic cleansing, apartheid, settler colonialism. And the civil society is willing to do as much as it can to help the Palestinians. We see it with the expansion of the BDS, the Boycott, the Investment and Sanction campaign. Uh, the question is, will the Western media, uh, political elites, uh, governments, change their policies? Uh, and and uh, as I said, I'm not very optimistic about it. I hope it will happen, of course, but I'm not. I'm much more interested in a way, and this is my third point, in the Jewish community's reaction. Because I think that they, uh, the Jews in Europe and in America in particular, have a real problem now. Uh, you know, they had a, a, an image of fantasy Israel. Uh, Israel uh, was uh, both a Jewish state and a democratic state. And it was a wonderful fantasy. And whenever people would say to them, yes, but you know what they are doing to the Palestinians, you know what they did to Palestine, they said, yes, but that's temporary. Once there will be peace, uh, there are there is a peace camp in Israel, um, and you are an anti-Semitic if you, if you, if you uh, say these things. How long can they continue to have this reality check and claim that they are dealing with a country which is democratic, liberal, progressive. Uh, maybe they could do it 50 years ago, 40 years ago. Can they really do it? Can the younger Jewish generation 
do it when they know much more than their parents because they are in the internet. They don't only read the mainstream media and watch television. They also know from the alternative media what's going on. And, and that, that would be a very interesting uh, uh, development. So, and maybe I will add just one more thing. The Arab countries and some of the Muslim countries are sta uh, standing in the queue to normalize relationship with Israel, hoping that this would strengthen the ties with America. Uh, these Arab regimes don't care much about democratic rights anyway, human rights in their own countries. So why should they care that much about the Palestinian? But as you mentioned, the, the, the Mondial, they understand that the more people would know what goes on in Palestine and the more extreme the Israeli government would be, their public opinion would demand to uh, a, a different approach than normalization. And uh, uh, so I'm not to sum up, I'm not pinning my hopes, unfortunately, on the Western governments. I don't think they, they would do much. I do think that there's something to be looked at the Jewish communities around the world, how they react, and about the Arab and Muslim countries. Uh, would they continue with this normalization now that this is what they are facing? Uh, and I'm not sure anybody can answer it, but I wouldn't say for sure Oh, they will continue as it is. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. Um, but uh, so, yes, it's going to be far more difficult to be a Palestinian under Israeli rule, whether you are in Gaza, the West Bank, inside Israel. Of course, the refugees will continue to be refugees under this government. It's, the question is, can we have a wider historical context here? And see a, a project of Zionism that is reaching a stage where I think it cannot fight anymore a moral fight. It can only fight a pow the, the, the power of force. It fights with force, not with morality. Historically, I can say, say to you as historians, when a regime reaches this point where it can only rely on power, on force, not on moral justification and so on, it uh, also can be uh, the beginning of an end for that regime as well. But in history, the beginning of an end, unfortunately, can be 50 years, not uh, not five minutes, unfortunately. But I really think that they are digging their own grave. With, and, and this was inevitable. This was inevitable. You cannot be a liberal colonizer. You cannot be a progressive ethnic cleanser. You cannot uh, be uh, a, a democratic uh, a colonialist. This doesn't work. And I think the true nature of the regime and the whole project, as far as the Palestinians are concerned, is now fully exposed. Uh, Ilan, thank you very much for this concise summary of the situation as it is. Uh, we're, we're going to keep it brief. But uh, I forgot to mention in the beginning, of course, that uh, for our uh, followers, that you are also the uh, very important author on uh, several books like this one. And uh, this one here, all really advisable and several others here behind me. Mm -hmm. And also this little gem from uh, my friend Frank Barat here in Brussels together with another hero of mine, Noam Chomsky. I'm always uh, thrilled to see that uh, a man like Chomsky and people like you still keep at it and not losing it. We are more or less of the same age. I'm from 53. I believe you are from 55 or something. 54. 54, 54 yeah. yes. And that we still <laughs> we still keep going. And that's all. We do, hope. we do. A, li a little bit, a bit of hope. So um, uh, I say goodbye to you. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll keep in touch. And thank you also followers of the world, Morgan, for following this uh, video. Thank you. Bye Thank bye. you very much, Lode. Thank you very much.